Blog Talk Radio. Yatra, Yatra, Manas Tushti, Manas Tatra, Eva Darayat, Tatra Tatra, Para Ananda, Svarupam, Sam Pravartet. Wherever, wherever you feel carried away, rejoicing in every breath, there, there is your meditation hall. Cherish these times of absorption. Rocking the baby in the silence of the night, pouring water into a crystal glass, tending the logs in a crackling fire, sharing a meal with a circle of friends. Embrace these pleasures and know this is my true body. Nowhere is more holy than this. Right here is the sacred pilgrimage. Live in alertness for such a moment, my beloved, as if it were your one meeting with the Creator. From the Radiant Sutras. Hello, everyone. This is Kresum, and I'd like to invite you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, Before I do, I would like to introduce my co-host, the Celtic Queen of Questionable Comforts, Her Holiness, Amelia Santara. Wake up! Wake up! (laughs) (laughs) Hello, Prism. Uh, That was beautiful. Wow, thank you. That was really, really lovely. Hi, everybody. Sanskrit first and English second. Yeah, yeah, wonderful and beautiful. Thank you. It's great to be here, as always, on a Wednesday evening here in Ireland. And I'm seeing everybody coming into the chat room. And it's really lovely now on a Wednesday how we, you know, so many old familiar friends and Kundalini gather in the chat room and we see each other and we're all here to listen to the Kundalini through you, Chris. And so it's, it's really a lovely part of the week. I think it's unusual with... Go ahead, go ahead. Yes. Um, I was just going to begin, as usual, letting people know where they can make a donation if they're in a position to do so and if they would like to support the work that you do, Chrism, that supports all of us and people who are going through a Kundalini awakening and need the teachings and support that you give. The address you can go to on the web is wwwascension kundalini.blogspot.com and there on the upper right hand corner is a donate button as well as teachings that you can read there as well so that's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and while I am giving you the place you can go to to make a donation please know there is absolutely no pressure on anybody to make a donation and it is just gratefully and joyfully received when it can be done and it goes to supporting not just Chrism in his daily life but all of us who are receiving the blessings and graces of the teachings that he gives in the very very many ways that he does this on Skype on email on all the teachings that he puts out on YouTube and all the Facebook groups and the Yahoo groups I mean he does this work 24 7 even when he's sleeping this work is being done because it is reaching us all at you know all the different time zones in the world and um, it is just a wonderful thing so if you're in a position to support this work then it would be gratefully appreciated thank you very much Chris and then looking forward to another wonderful show which I know it will be thank you thank you uh, Santara thank you very Hello. much and thank you <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Is it coming through? Can you hear me, anyone? Hello. I can hear you fine. And it... Let's Anybody see in the... the chat room. Julie wasn't here. Can you hear me on the chat room there? Fashji, Lauren, Let's Mike, on the chat. Elizabeth. I see Julie's there. Yeah, she can hear me. Hi, Julie. Oh, Elizabeth. Excellent. Hello, Elizabeth. 
so nice to be able to. Hi, Lauren. Hello. No, Lauren, thank you. Uh, wow. Okay, Fasti. Steve, thank you both. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this, this, this show on the road. This is kind of an odd show. I'm, I'm being torn between different subjects, so I think she just wants to handle them both. The first subject, uh, uh, whoa, being kind of pulled back here a little bit. Uh, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems com is where you can get this information if you just need to read about it on the website. For those of you that are experiencing this in the archives, hello and welcome. Uh, you can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems com. That's the number one dot com. You can go to Chrism dot Kundalini, or I'm sorry, Chrism Zero Kundalini in. Uh, the uh, YouTube network. You can go to Kundalini and the Facebook networks. Uh, we have groups. Uh, the groups are called Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com or, or at Facebook, Kundalini Awakening System Two at Facebook, Kundalini Awakening ex- Exclamation Point on Facebook. We also have Kundalini Healing on Facebook, Kundalini Ashram on Facebook, and uh, Kundalini Radiant Community, which is our newest community on the Facebook network. We also have. Uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups on the Yahoo Networks and Kundalini Healing on the Yahoo Networks as well as Kundalini Awakening Tantra, Kundalini Virgins. These are all on the on the uh, Yahoo Network as well. So please feel free to go there and get that uh, information as you see fit to do for yourself. Today's uh, talk is going to be around the idea and the action of giving yourself to the Kundalini. So let's begin. When you give, when I say give yourself to the Kundalini, what I'm saying is that I'm just not saying, oh, okay, for this moment in time, I give myself to the Kundalini, hi, do with me what you will, and then you just kind of go ahead and do your own thing the way you were just going to do it before. I want it to mean more to you. If you're going to give yourself to the Kundalini, then really give yourself. Make it a visceral experience. Allow yourself to feel the the blending between your kundalini and yourself. Allow yourself to become submerged and immersed in the in the love and the gentleness and the grace of your kundalini. And allow those toxicities that rise to the surface because of this immersion, because of this giving of yourself. The kundalini will go right through you once again, and it'll it'll start pushing up things that need to be cleared. Okay? And so as these things come up into your everyday life, every every evening, night life, I want you to begin to look at them, and I want you to forgive them, and I want you to acknowledge them and move forward. Through them, they are no longer a blockage. They are no longer a problem. They are. They no longer have the ability to usurp control from the kundalini, the control that the kundalini wants to have over you, and the control that you want the kundalini to have over you as well. Once again, for those of you who are just uh, beginning this this path, kundalini awakening is the awakening of a sacred center of power at the base of the tailbone, last three vertebrae. In the Sanskrit language, it's called kundalini, which means uh, coiled inside, which it is. Uh, as this awakening uh, goes up the spine and you know permeates the uh, cerebrospinal fluid and, and then uh, uh, begins to spread itself along the neural pathways and from the neural pathways to the to the uh, uh, the other systems of the body, the the endocrine system, the muscular system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system, and the other systems of the body that science doesn't really have a, an understanding of, such as the thought systems and the emotional systems, the uh, the spiritual systems of acknowledgement that realize that the decisions you make here on this world have a direct and proportional response from the karmic. Uh, uh, veil that is constantly with you and observing you and and watching you and making notes about uh, the choices that you make in your life. So really, really, really begin to understand the level of importance and the level of sacredness that this 
giving of yourself actually has. You don't give yourself to the kundalini and then go out and have a scotch and soda. <laughs> unless, unless, of course, you have to. Uh, you don't give yourself to the kundalini and then go out and, and, and you know, commit petty theft or cut somebody off on the freeway. Or, and, and yet, at the same time, I know as these toxicities surface within your five systems, you know, there's going to be some anger issue. There'll be some fear issues. There'll be some lashing out. There'll be some self-lashing. There'll be some, some corrective measures that you're going to want to make in order to self-correct yourself away from, say, an ego-based expression uh, because of a toxicity. So, you know, as the toxicities come forward, well, your ego comes forward too. And the ego steps forward in order to defend its, its levels of toxicity and to defend, hey, dude, I like alcohol. I like my alcohol, dude. You can't take that away from me. That type of, a, that type of an inner dialogue might, might be happening. And you most certainly can take that alcohol away. Or any other behavior that you don't feel is in uh, a positive response to your kundalini awakening agenda. You, as a higher mental functioning consciousness, uh, in the HUNA terms, H-U-N-A, in the HUNA terms, you are, are the, uh, the uhane. You're the middle uh, personality that comprises the whole. Okay, you have the, the unihipili, the, the ego, uhane, higher mental functioning self, and then the amakua, the dual, uh, and the singular at the same time as the awakened kundalini. It's just another name for that. So as you begin to self-correct, as you begin to change your behaviors towards a greater giving of yourself and the giving of the control over your life by the kundalini, because you, you need to please remember that the kundalini knows you better than you know yourself. I know, I know you guys have heard this a thousand times before, but this is, this is more for the, for the new folks that are coming in, the, uh, you know, the people on the... Uh, on the uh, in the future with the archives and I know you Steve Mike Lauren Fasti Elizabeth uh, Julie you 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 have all heard this before and 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 to to varying degrees you respond to it as best you can uh, what I'm suggesting now is to increase those varying degrees of the, of of commitment increase it. You can give yourself to the kundalini within you. How hard is that? Well, it can be kind of difficult because the kundalini will then take control of your life and then begin to, to sculpt its agenda around that control that it has taken over of your life. But you have to also remember the kundalini knows you might have a kid. The kundalini knows that you might have a spouse. The kundalini knows what level of society you live in. And by level, I mean you know, what is the appropriate behavior within, the, within the, uh, the society you live in, right? Kundalini knows all about this. So, of course, it's going to give you tasks or purification events or phenomena that will also support you in, in your life and how you need to live your life within the social milieu or the social context, the current social context. Uh, so really, really... Here's a practice I'm going I'm to suggest to all of you. Go into the bathroom. Stand in front of the mirror over the sink. Look at yourself right in the eyes. And give yourself to Kundalini. Give yourself to Kundalini. Say it verbally. I give myself to Kundalini. Say it three times. Look right in the pupil of your eye. You're talking to your Kundalini as you see your, yourself. Okay. Now for those of you that have a teacher and the, you know you have the, the, the kundalini uh, in body teacher and you have the flesh body exterior teacher at the same time well then you give yourself to that teacher as well you give yourself to that teacher as well so you look right in your eyes and whoever that teacher is for you you say I give myself to uh, we'll just make up a name uh, to 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 <laughs> no names are coming. I give, I give myself to my teacher, whoever that may be. And you say that three times. But you really have to mean it. You really have to mean it. You want to mean it very, very strongly, very, very clearly. Because it will respond to this. Okay. 
And the other thing I want you to do is I want you to, to do the same practice. Look at yourself in the picture, or I'm sorry, in the reflection of the mirror. Look at yourself and say, I love you. Say, I love me. I love you, me. Okay, how does that work, Centaur? Wake up, wake up, come on. Wake up. I know it's late there in Ireland. Come on. Don't make me go get the water. <laughs> oh, wow. It takes, it takes ages, Chris, and sometimes for that button to unmute. <laughs> and then I go into a panic and I forget what you asked me. Sorry. <laughs> Well, well, what was your question? Let me just read it. Uh, let me just ask you another question then. Um, how have you have you done this kind of a practice that I'm describing? Yes, I have. And how does, how I remember does it make, at the very beginning. How, how does it make you feel? Let people know it what the results one, are. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay, it's a wonderful practice, Chrism. Um, when I began, first of all, looking in the mirror and saying, you know, I love you, I love you, what actually rose for me, um, I mean, that's going back a while now, but what rose for me was amazing because it was not something that I would have really said to myself. And it used to make me cry. And it opened up aspects of myself that I really hadn't been in touch with for a long time. And as I began to say a mantra to my Kundalini and then to my teacher, you know, about I give myself and my body and my mind and, you know, my emotions and all of that, that I give myself and always um, and always to the Kundalini and to my teacher, that, that there are different responses, but that opened up in me the willingness to go further with it and it allowed me as well quiz I mean you know it's easy to say that to it's easy to say that to the kundalini sometimes and it's easy to say that when everything is going well and when I'm in bliss and and when there are wonderful things happening and there's good phenomena but you were speaking about you know when toxic toxic you know when the toxic response comes and you know when there's cleansing and that happening well then it is easy to get distracted or to get onto a different way with the ego because the ego does defend itself I mean vigorously or that has been my experience and in those circumstances saying to myself you know I give when it becomes a practice of saying I give myself and my body and my mind and my thoughts and when I'm meaning that when I'm giving my thoughts to the Kundalini and to my teacher well then it disengages with giving those thoughts to my ego so it's a really practical wonderful ongoing way to extend go deeper with my surrender to the Kundalini Um, and it helps me out incredibly when there are times that I um, I could be detoured. I don't get detoured as much as I used to get detoured, Chrism. And so the the ma- I'm calling it a mantra, but this you know whatever word you want to say, this I suppose declaration of my surrender to my Kundalini, to the inner Kundalini, and to the outer Kundalini, which is my teacher, because you know there. This is what really, really supports my deeper surrender because my teacher verbalizes to me what my kundalini would verbalize to me except my ego cuts it off sometimes. Not so much as much as it used to do because, you see, it's a, it's a long process for me. I'm doing it a long time. So it is something that I that has had so much um, meaning for me in so many different ways. Sometimes when I say the mantra, I just have an absolute infusion of kundalini. I feel the kundalini responding to me. And I feel it responding in different areas of my bodies as well. In, you know, like in my emotional body, I might, I might be saying the mantra and I have an infusion into my emotional body from the kundalini. Is it a direct, is it, is it almost like a bridge 
of communication between me and Kundalini as well as the mantra. So well, let me, it serves. Let me, and it, let, me, let me ask you, Amelia. Even before you do your Kundalini infused therapeutic touch uh, massages to people, are you not also going into a level of devotion that hinges on giving yourself in that way? Is that yes, not? Yes, I am. Power? Yes. Doesn't that bring the power of the Kundalini connection into your massage? Yes, it does, I and mean, it, it brings it in in the most amazing way, Chrism. Um, and, you know, it's a mantra. It's actually a devotion. I mean, mantra right. is, is a devotion, an absolute devotion. I mean, mantra isn't even the word. It is a, an absolute devotion to the Kundalini and, indeed, to my teacher. And the truth in what has been said and becoming so immersed with the Kundalini as I am saying that, um, God, there are levels of freedom and... Um, truth, and I just don't know. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I get it. It's it, it. it, 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 so, it, it very difficult because there are so many. I, I, as I'm speaking, I'd like to go back and say a little bit more about this and that because there are so many aspects go ahead. to what go ahead. you know. This go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well. Well, as well, it's it's a prayer. It's a prayer of an in, of intention. But not only is it a prayer of intention, it's like a prayer of actualization. Is there such a word? It is the doing of the intention. It is the practical um, living of the intention. And. Um, so saying that, I'm going to call it now, Kristen, if I may, I'm going to call it the devotion um, rather than the mantra because that's what it is to me. It is, a, it is a devotion and a surrender and an absolutely giving of myself into every aspect of myself to the Kundalini and indeed to my teacher. And, you know, the Kundalini takes control of my life through me, Doing that, I suppose it completely takes control of the life anyway, but it is the non-resistance and the, the going deeper and deeper with that that um, is just freedom is a word that just keeps coming to me because that's what it is. It's the freedom prism that has to be experienced in the day-to-day living of the life, you know? Right. And part of when I'm... Well, I'm saying that as well about, you know, I give myself and my body and my mind. I mean, you know, you could go, I give myself and my body. But the meaning of that, of giving my mind to the Kundalini, and when you do that, the Kundalini takes it. <laughs> the Kundalini, yeah. you know, takes make, that. Make, it's, it's, that it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a commitment, really. It's a commitment it is. that you're making. It is a total commitment. It is an absolute commitment that you're making. And then in the living, I mean, the safety then, Chrism, becomes, um, you know, like that's a way then that I can um, make the commitment of the giving of myself um, throughout my day. It's, it links all of that, you know, throughout yeah, my yeah. day and night. The do- I think that's safeties. a very good point. I, um, I think it's a very... It's a very good point you bring up with regards to, you know, it's a daily experience. It's not something that you just figure, okay, I can schedule this in on Friday, two and a half weeks uh, from now. Then I'll schedule my giving of myself to the Kundalini. You know, it, it, can, it, it doesn't really work so much that way. Okay, it works far more in the realm of giving yourself in a complete, uh, total way, all the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. And allowing yeah, yeah. Kundalini to, be, to begin to... Kundalini will suggest behavioral changes. So let's say you run up against a problem. Um, uh, uh, so whatever the problem is, your Kundalini will immediately assess it. And your ego will immediately assess it. And, it, and it's the, the difference between the Kundalini assessment and the ego assessment is typically pretty expanded 
Uh, and you always go with the Kundalini assessment. You always go. And so you're always making that choice towards the Kundalini assessment. And some of you are going to be asking, like, oh, well, how do I know it's the Kundalini that's making this assessment? Well, if it involves uh, uh, self-pleasure, if it involves... Uh, a lust for power, if it involves controlling other people, if it involves fear, if it involves violence, if it involves anger, if it involves, you know, these types of manifestations, you could pretty much uh, rest it on the doorstep of the ego. If it involves balance, if it involves honesty, if it involves integrity, if it involves trust, sincerity, uh, you know, compassion, consideration, selfless service, love, uh, you know, honesty, all these things, then you can pretty much place it within the kundalini sphere of uh, suggestions for you. Always choose into those areas that I just finished uh, outlining for you. Uh, really, 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 sometimes, sometimes, you know, if you're, you, you, you know, a situation isn't always going to respond to to happy, happy, joy, joy. Sometimes it's going to need, you know, a little more passionate uh, response but not ever really in a way that you used to do it. You are not the person you used to be, any of you. Every day, you're gaining more experience. Every day, you're evolving. Every day, that evolution is sending you forward into your destiny. Kundalini is now part of your destiny. Kundalini has now uh, taken control of the evolutionary uh, process within your body, your mind, your emotional body, your psychology, and your spiritual body. The five bodies of expression, the five purushas of sanatana, okay, which is like a, a form of a conservative Vedant, Vedanta. Uh, so really, really begin to make some behavioral changes. Look in the mirror. Give yourself to your, to your kundalini. Give yourself to your flesh teacher if you have one. Really Really do this daily. Every time you get up from bed, you know, in the early morning and say you're getting ready for work, you're always heading for that bathroom. You're always looking in that mirror. Every time you look in that mirror, give yourself to the kundalini. Give yourself to your flesh teacher. Seriously, give yourself in, in ways that that only you can really hold and describe. You know... Uh, many of the areas that you need to work on. You know when you're giving yourself honestly and, and sincerely. You know when you're committing yourself or not. You also know when you're not committing yourself. So in this, in this sense, I want you to really begin to pay attention to the level of commitment that you're giving to the kundalini in you. To all aspects of assistance for you as you have this kundalini awakening experience. Really begin to let go of societal programming that says, oh, it's only okay to do this if you're in that situation, and it's only okay to do that if you're in this situation. You let that go for, for the time being. I have, to, I have to counsel you. You're not going to be told to steal or hurt or murder or, or you know, condemn anybody. You're not going to be told to do anything that is uh, anti-safeties or anti-evolutionary along the kundalini um, uh, awakening path. You're not going to be asked to, to, to go backwards into your evolution. You're going to be asked, however, to go forward into your evolution. And you're not going to be asked always in a gentle, you know, cotton candy, sugar plum fairy, you know, little candy snowflakes. Not always like, like an Easter egg, as much as I would like to say it is, because I like Easter eggs. Mm. But it's not always like that. It's not always like an Easter egg. Even a chocolate Easter egg bunny. <laughs> or a marshmallow bunny, now that I'm on the Easter thing. So realize that you're going to have some, some troubles with this. You're going to have some problems with this. You're going to have some challenges with this. And I always want you to come out of it uh, giving yourself to your kundalini, giving yourself to your teacher, Taking yourself away from behaviors that that uh, that attack your integrity. Keep your integrity strong. Keep your commitment levels to your Kundalini awakening process very, very strong. Daily, if not hourly. 
Some of my private students, they are doing devotionals six times a day. I have them go out and, you know, I have them out a prayer rug or blanket or something that they want to do uh, meditation on. And then once that is given and uh, signed, and then six times a day, they will go down on their hands and knees into devotion towards their kundalini process, towards me as their teacher. I'll encourage you to do this. I mean, I'm not going to do this because, you know, there's some sort of a real fixation that I have about having people give themselves to me. I mean, I'm in California. I am one step from living in my camp trailer. I really could care less about having to control the lives or, you know, of other people. I let my kundalini do that. The Christian ego has nothing to do with receiving uh, another person's gift of themselves. That goes to the kundalini always. The kundalini in me, which is what makes me a kundalini teacher. Not a diploma, not a contract in gold filigree, framed and hung up on somebody's wall, but it's the contract between the kundalini and myself and and the fact that I have surrendered myself so completely to the kundalini that the kundalini has felt comfortable enough to, to send me forth into this world, into this society as a teacher of itself. For others, I hear Centara moving around. She's. What do you think she's doing? I don't know. <laughs> she is the Celtic I'm queen of questionable I'm comfort. <laughs> That's kind of I'm dangerous. My you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could just stop right there. Um, so, so. So feel, I, I say this because I want you to feel safety in giving yourself to, to a teacher, if you have one, to the kundalini, definitely. You know, I could care less. If, even if you are my private student, like Amelia, you know, she's pretty much my private student, you know, except for the kundalini uh, and, and, and some of the, uh, the experiences that she's being taught with, uh, uh, she has a very strong commitment towards her kundalini and towards me as her flesh teacher. Okay. And so this doesn't mean that, that now, oh, now she's like at risk for anything. If anything, she's at risk for having a faster evolution than she would have normally had into the kundalini. Same with anybody else that is a private student of mine. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a way, a teaching that, that espouses the many different ways that we can match and commit ourselves to our kundalini evolution by changing our behaviors or giving ourselves certain levels of behavior modification that allows us to live our life in a greater harmony with the energies of the kundalini that are within us and that are outside of us at the same time. Okay. This is what this is about. You know, you don't... You know, you, you know, I would encourage you not to just tune into this radio show and then step out of your doorstep and walk through, through, the, through the society that you live in and not, and not practice what we're talking about right now. I want you to look at every, every, uh, every source of light, the stars, the moon, the, uh, the, the street lights, the traffic lights, if you're lucky enough to have a Timex Indiglo wristwatch, well, you can look at that light, too, if it's the right time of the day for you. Uh, look at light and realize that it's only really appreciated when it's surrounded by darkness. We are, sur we are constantly surrounded by darkness in our society and within our Kundalini Awakening experience. If you go on the web... Go on the web and, and Google Kundalini and just look at all the, the very serious uh, fear-inducing warnings against the Kundalini. Oh, it'll make you crazy. Oh, my God, you'll, you, you, you'll commit suicide. You'll, you'll get sick and die. You'll end up in a psych ward. You, you know, you'll, you'll start wearing a, a Bozo the Clown nose and you won't know why. This is what happened to me. And, and, and so, and, uh, kidding with that. Although I did wear a Bose of the Clown nose. But <laughs> I was a clown at the time. I was being a clown. 
uh, you know, face paint the whole bit. Uh, no sharp corners, by the way. Always soft, gentle, rounded corners. Um, with your commitment, you will be pushed further into, as I was going to say before, your purification areas. Let the purifications come. Control your anger or your irritation at them. A lot of time, it's going to be it's going to be a very rapid response from you. Uh, the Kundalini will bring up a, a memory or an experience, a, you know, a memory of an experience, whatever it is that that pushes a lot of buttons on you, on your emotional body, on your mental body, on your ego body, and, and really take a moment, take a breath, and let that go on purpose. Consciously let this go. And do that with every other item that your kundalini brings up into your awareness that is of a, of a say, of a blockage or hurtful or, or any kind of an impediment to, to your flow of kundalini. Remember the safety. Excuse me. Always, always look at the qualities of the safeties that are given uh, within the, the whatever the situation that you find yourself in. So, for instance, uh, you're at a gas station and, and uh, you know, <laughs> people, yeah, here in the States, you know, people are pretty spoiled, I think. Uh, a lot of power consumption, a lot of gasoline, oil consumption here. Uh, and people can get fairly belligerent uh, if you take too long at the gas comp pump or do the wrong thing at the gas pump, can't figure out how to get your gas cap off or lose your key, lock yourself out of the car, whatever it is. Uh, just take a look at how things are at the gas pump. And if the Kundalini brings up a situation there, how are you going to hold it? I'm bringing up gas pumps. Because I kind of want it to be flagged in your mind the next time you're there and something of a critical nature happens, say, to you within your kundalini awakening, you can begin to make your changes, your behavioral modifications. You can begin to do that. Well, I'd like to say hello to Whitehawk and Tim Ashworth. Good to see you, too. Or at least see you there in the chat room. Mike Strong, I see you're typing. And, and blessings to whatever, whatever it is that you're saying that's going to come through in a moment. Um, yeah, give yourself to the Kundalini completely. Give yourself to your teacher completely. Make sure you've got a teacher that, that isn't really wrapped up in having control. Seriously, that's, that's, that's an important concept. I don't want you, you know, hitching your wagon to a Jim Jones or a, you know, a, uh, you know, somebody that's maybe out there to, to help themselves at your expense rather than, than uh, help you at their expense. So, so really, look at this. Look at this clearly. Look at this as a as a key to really applying your commitment. You know, having the idea is one thing. That's great. Having the idea is a wonderful thing. Committing yourself to activating that idea and then activating it through actions and experiences. It's even better. It's even better. Okay. Commit yourself to this kundalini practice. Commit yourself to having the kundalini. Let yourself know. Oh, here we go. I see a, a Mike Strong. Oh, Fields Bookstore, which is closed now. I'll have you know, Mike. Fields Bookstore is now closed in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah, totally true. Totally true. <laughs> ah, that's great. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really, really make that commitment. And and uh, if you read what Mike wrote there, for those of you on the chat room, uh, it Basically, Mike, Mike wrote that uh, he was in a bookstore, a Fields bookstore in uh, San Francisco, and he was looking through a book by Gopi Krishna when a young woman wearing a motorcycle helmet told me, Kundalini does not need to be frightful. It can be pure bliss. And Mike Strong 
continues. He says, then she walked out into the street, but she didn't get on a motorcycle. She got on the bus. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying get on the bus, folks. Whether you've got a motorcycle helmet on or not, get on the bus. Get on this Kundalini bus and really begin to, to behavioral uh, modify yourself. Change your attitudes. Change your emotional outburst consistently every single day. Change it. It doesn't change overnight, believe it or not. You've, you've had a lifetime practicing how to make things that your ego likes to stick and work for you. Now, I want you to make things that your kundalini likes to stick and work with you. Okay? That's, that's where I'm going to suggest you go now. All right. So, if you have any questions about this part of our conversation, uh, please feel free to call United States Area Code 347 934 If you would like to talk about any aspect of your Kundalini Awakening experience, call 347 934 I would like to bring Her Holiness Eileen on right now. Eileen! Hello. 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 Hey, I'm glad you I'm glad you found a an internet spot. I can totally relate to how you felt. Yes, indeed. Oh, now, I like, I, I, like, I would like you to relate uh, the opportunities that are coming up in September for Kundalini people in the Midwest. I would like I to. I like to. It's an echo prism. Okay. So. Uh, I hate. Uh, I hate. Do you want me? Do you want me to go ahead? Why don't you go ahead and put your headphones I, on? I, I. I'm not on the computer. I'm on the phone. Ah. Oh well. That I don't know what to tell you. Well, go ahead I'll, and make, I'll you, try, make the announcement. All right. Uh, September 27th and 28th in Egan, Minnesota. Prism will Which is be. Where? Host- where is Egan? Egan? Egan, Minnesota, in the United States. It's in the uh, Twin City area, Minneapolis, St. Paul, 10 minutes from the International Airport. Uh, okay. Prism will be there to have, um, he's offering a two-day seminar, uh, and the contact is rosemaryg at usinternet.com. That's rosemaryg at usinternet.com. Uh, I don't have her phone number offhand, but if you're interested, she can send you information, and we'd love to see you there. And there are a few people already signed up, and the seminars that Chrism gives are very personal, and each one is unique because the seminar is um, basically comprised of the participants. And so what the needs of the participants are, that's what takes place in the seminar. And so a a community is formed with the people that are there. So uh, I'm looking forward to meeting other Kundalini people and, again, to be with my teacher, Chrism, uh, for a couple of days. So if anyone has interest or is interested, it's very close to a lot of the big cities, Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin, um, North Dakota, Indianapolis. It's not that far, about a five-hour drive from some of the bigger cities. And anyway, that's it. Well, thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you very much. Very, very, very well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. And, and, and so, echo- yeah, I'm sure... Uh, I tell you what, Eileen, with, with Blog Talk Radio, you know, sometimes you just get these weird echoes. I don't know how to how to fix it. You know, and, and Ed, you know, who another uh, a Kundalini person, uh, uh, his name is Ed, you know, he says, oh, geez, well, what are the, what are the chances that, that Kundalini people working around electrical objects will have electrical problems with those objects? <laughs> so the chances are pretty good. So, yeah, 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 so... You know, if we have little problems here on air or off air or when I'm interviewing Eileen or Centara or Rosemary, whoever, uh, there may be some glitches. 
there may be some glitches. You know, the uh, the mundane, energetic uh, uh, carriage of some of these machines is you know can be uh, can be affected by the Kundalini. Okay, so yeah. Once again, if you have any kind of a question about uh, what I've been talking about with regards to to giving yourself to the Kundalini, please call three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Now, I want to get back a little bit. I'm going to change the subject here. Big big change of the subject. Uh oh. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Big change of the subject here. With Kundalini you're going to get a certain amount of, as you know, physiological changes. But as, as you accept the kundalini into your life and as you give yourself to the kundalini, the kundalini will respond. And often it will respond with levels of energetic pressure upon the head, upon the forehead, and in various uh, areas of the body. Mostly... Uh, because you know, if people are practicing the safeties, well, they're practicing the eyes up position, and the, the eyes up position will pull, actually pull Kundalini uh, from the lower chakras and the heart, and 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 deposit levels of activation or levels of of uh, activations on the crown uh, at the seventh chakra, and this sometimes it's just a little too much. But even when the Kundalini comes spontaneously in a person, it, it can still bring a little bit of a headache pain and sometimes a migraine headache pain. And so please be aware of that. Please be aware of that and don't let it throw you. It's just, it's just like teething in a two-year-old. It's like the, the, the pain that a two-year-old baby would feel as their, as their new teeth start moving in. It's the same thing with the Kundalini. When you get these strong uh, energies in the forehead, the back of the head, the neck, uh, pressures on the heart, pressures in the ear, pressures in the eyes, nose, the mouth. Uh, these are all just growing pains. Just growing pains. It's not anything that you need to be concerned with. Okay, let Look at the pain. Look at what you're doing or what has been done to cause the pain. See if there is a level of mitigation that you can do that allows you to know for a fact that this is kundalini induced pain. If it's if it's if it's typically like a headache or a migraine or something like that and you have the kundalini, you know you have the kundalini up, well then you can pretty much park that one at the door of the kundalini and just learn how to get through it. Learn how to acclimate. Learn how to increase your energy uh, so that the the constant increase that the kundalini is giving you is is acclimated to much quicker. It's all a level of accl- acclimation, really. I mean, I used to get headaches a lot too. You know, when I mean, I've never been a real headachey person, but after the Kundalini came up this time in this body, uh, this body had to go through acclimation. My soul has already been acclimated. My spirit has already been acclimated. My higher fun- function and consciousness already acclimated by virtue of the Kundalini I had during childhood. But this body. This physical body, emotional body, mental body, all of those connected perushas or sheaths uh, of the bodies that are connected to this body, this this chrism body, then uh, that all had to get reacclimated from 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 the start. Okay, this you know I'm, I'm suggesting this will this may occur for you as well. Remember, you know, karmically we're different. We're different people. And so we have different karmas, and so we have different rules to some degree that we have to live by. We agree on certain rules as a society, or we don't have a society, and we do have one. And so we're agreeing on certain rules, and we're also agreeing, certainly in this radio program, that the kundalini is the one who really gets to call the shots. Your kundalini, that which is behind your heart and behind your eyes and expressing through the light of your radiance is the one that gets to be the the boss. Okay, you get to feel what it's like to be in a, in a in a in the very beginnings of semi divinity, a semi divine state, a semi divine state, and and it is up to you 
how far you wish to go into this divinity. Do you have a handle? Do you have a handle on your ego? Uh, do you have a handle on ego expressions like self-aggrandizement? Do you have a handle on ego expressions like fear? Okay, like greed. Okay, like the fear of loss and the want of gain through any means. Look at where your ego is. And then you'll feel where your kundalini is. And a lot of people, you know, like, well, Chris, I'm, geez, you know, how do I, how do I do this? How do I, what technique do I need in order to communicate with my kundalini? What technique do I need in order to take these, to make these behavioral modifications work? And the technique that you need is to just do it. As they say in Nebraska, get her done. Stop wasting your time. You get a certain number of heartbeats in this life. I'm going to suggest you you you, you allow those the majority of those heartbeats to support your kundalini awakening process. Seriously. This is what your life is about. It's not about making the money. It's not about having the perfect relationship because you're kundalini and you already have that. It's about you and your evolution into semi-divinity. Semi only because you have a body. You have a physical body, so that's what's going to make it semi. You have a physical body, and your physical body exists in a, in a, uh, in a continuum where certain you, rules apply. Certain physical rules apply in this continuum. And within those rules, your kundalini has agreed to work within those rules so that you can manifest uh, your destiny, your royal destiny in a way. I mean, that's all I can, how to phrase that. It's such, a, a, such an extreme uh, destiny. You know, God and goddess, that's a real thing. That's a real condition. And you all are on that path. You may not know it yet. Your, you know, your ego may not let you believe it, but you're there. If you're working with the Kundalini, if you're learning about the Kundalini, well, you're learning about what it is to walk a semi-divine path. Look at, your, look at the, the things that you cherish in your life. Horror movies. Um, popcorn, uh, breaking the law, driving fast, using recreational substances, stealing, uh, lust, perversion. Um, what's that thing called? Uh, hang on, I'll think of it. It's called pornography. Pornography. Um, uh, chemical addictions, uh, emotional addictions, addictions to being sick, uh, fear of not being happy. Look at the way you you know a typical person might live their life and clean it up. Doesn't mean you won't have fun. Of course you're still going to have fun, just a different kind of fun. Bliss is really really fun. Bliss is an amazingly fun experience. You want to have as much of that as you can. It's better than sex. Okay, although you don't want to have it for the for the reasons of chasing, you know, a uh, a phenomena. You want to have it as a reward. Oh, I almost said reward. You want to have it as an as an as a as a consequence of the giving of yourself to your kundalini. That's what it's about. Now I want to say something to those who are listening to this program in their sleep. So just one moment, for those of you who are awake. Kalum tum ganapati avamahe, kavin kavinu mupamishavastamam, jay shterajam, bramina bramina maspata anaha, nasem vanu tbc de saranam. Ah. 
sleep, sleep. Let your Kundalini teach you. Sleep and let your Kundalini teach you. For those of you who are awake, don't sleep and let your Kundalini teach you. <laughs> you get you get twelve hours on and another twelve hours on. Okay. Keep yourself cogent of what your responsibilities are with the Kundalini. Give yourself all the time. There are some times that I, I counsel uh, some of the private students not to give themselves into mantra work or, or, or uh, you know, any kind of a, of a giving type of work that would take their mind off of other things. Don't give yourself to the Kundalini when you drive. Don't give yourself to the kundalini when you're working, when you're inside your employment. The only reason being is I don't want you to lose that job and I don't want you to crash that car. Okay? Some of these states are quite strong. And sometimes, even though, yes, 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 the kundalini is taking care of you in, in, in very big ways. One moment here. Sorry, I, I had to sneeze. So... Really be aware. Really be aware of where you are with your kundalini and increase it. Increase your commitment to the kundalini. Increase your commitment to your teacher if you have one. Okay. Now, with the pain that can come with uh, detoxifications, yes, you can get more of a migraine type of headache pain. Uh, sometimes the uh, aspirin will help with that. Uh, any of the of the uh, over-the-counter pain meds will, you know, can help with that. Of course, Vicodin or Percocet or Percodan or I forget the other names of some of the other drugs. You know, those things will also work. It's not be- they're working because the Kundalini allows them to work, almost in a placebo-like fashion, even though they do have that uh, that pain-relieving quality, uh, you know, in their makeup, in their design. You can have migraine-type uh, <laughs> very true, Mike. Mike writes, going through dance-like or yoga-like kriyas is frowned upon by corporate types. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Or doing the snake walk or the snake dance. That's also frowned upon. Telling people at the banker's board meeting that now they're going to start following the teachings of and actions of Christ is a really good way to get thrown off of the banking board. That's one of my students had that occur to them. You know, they lost everything. They lost their job. They lost their house. They lost. He lost his money. He lost his wife. I met him up in Maine at another Kundalini person's place, and we did a little work. And then, you know, he moves to New Mexico and starts a new life, has a new wife, a new job, a new family. Things are going great. Things are going great to this day for this man. We'll call him Bob. Okay. Sometimes the Kundalini just needs you to change from where you are, and she will arrange for that to occur. And your ego won't know it. Your, your, you know, even your higher mental functioning consciousness won't know it. And so there will be some opportunities for fear. But if you trust your Kundalini, if you have faith in your Kundalini, then just go with the flow. Make the change. Open yourself to the new experience that's coming your way, even though you may not know what that is. Open yourself. Surrender yourself to the agenda that the Kundalini holds for you. Yeah, yeah, Mike writes, uh, happy ending in the land of enchantment. Yeah, Bob Bob did have a pretty happy uh, landing. Um, but he went, you know, Bob went from the highest of the high. He was a he was a chairman of the board of a large banking consortium on Wall Street. His kundalini came to him by virtue of his severe alcoholism. And it came to him and it infatuated him with the teachings of Christ, with the teachings of service, with the teachings of, of uh, well, you know, so he goes ahead and he outlines all these cheat teachings to the board meeting. And they had him... They sacked him before his his eyes could blink, I think. They sacked him so fast. They took his money. They took his 
his car, his anything that was associated with him and his job uh, was taken away. And, of course, his wife, uh, maybe she didn't like the new lifestyle. I don't know. But she left as well and took the kids with her. And uh, he was basically directed to go to New Mexico and, and there the, you know, as Mike said, a happy ending. A happy continuing, I should say. A happy continuing. Now, with, with, uh, with all of you, there's the same availability for very, very positive outcomes by the Kundalini. You just won't know. You won't be able to figure out how it's going to do that until you really begin to deepen your commitment and to begin to find the pattern inside the divine uh, agenda. What is the pattern? Well, the, the Kundalini Awakening Safeties can be seen as a level of patterning that the kundalini wants you to begin to adopt. It wants you to adopt these patterns in your response to the kundalini awakening that's occurring to you or in response to a kundalini awakening that you are seeking, that you are wanting to have because those safeties are a standalone activation process. Practice the safeties, practicing the safeties is a response to your kundalini on a daily level. And of course, you know, these days I'm telling people to practice it in the morning and in the evening, twice a day. That's 42 Tibetans a day when you get to that point. If you're just starting out doing this, start with six of each Tibetan. Okay. And if you want to know how that looks, then go to... Uh, 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 Chrism is the number zero and then the word Kundalini and you'll go to uh, the, the first the first three videos I did were basically on that and it'll show this old guy with kind of a beard you know hanging out in Florida or on a college lawn or something like that okay uh, go there and have a look at it have a look at it See how see how this teacher is is suggesting that you do it. Now that and that's another thing. Uh, let, here we go, segueing into another topic. Teachers, I'm not fond of any of the teachers that I find on YouTube or that I find on the internet. Uh, some of them are good. The ones that I can see that are not self-aggrandizing, they're good. I, I you know some of them, some of them. Uh, the 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 ha, hmm. most of them, however. Most of them just, uh, there, there's a lot of entity possession of people who who, who are uh, claiming to be great spiritual masters. A um, lot of entity possession there. Uh, especially those who uh, are outside of their tradition like me. I'm outside of, a say, a Sanskrit or a or a shamanic or a religious tradition. I'm outside of all those, especially those people that have activated or or wanted to activate or gave themselves permission to just say that they're activated, which happens a lot. And uh, they they can begin to uh, bring more changes into their own lives. Uh, you you know it's a real crapshoot out there on on YouTube and on the internet. Um, since we're on the subject of giving yourself to the Kundalini, and, you know, uh, you know, by, you know, by, by, uh, by, you know, also giving yourself to the exterior teacher of the Kundalini in you, it's really, 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 really important to choose wisely. Do your research. Don't believe everything that they write about the teacher. Make sure people lie about me all the time. You know, I get hate mail. People coming up to me say, I heard what you said on that blog talk radio, and I think you're just an asshole, and you're lying, and you're, you know, the, the devil's going to get you. You know, it's, it, you know, I just, you just got to forgive them and move on and just, you know, you know, have confidence in the competency of what it is you're doing. Oh, boy. Lots of activity on the, on the uh, chat group there. Uh, so, so, yeah, choose your teacher wisely. Find a doctrine of signature with the teacher that will that will rise above any of the complaints or any of the adulation compliments, any of the critiques, 
see and feel a quality in a certain person that you're looking at as an exterior teacher and let that quality speak for itself from a kundalini context. A lot of people don't like what I do because they don't understand what I do. A lot of the people that say, you know, I've done, you know, this or that, uh, you know, they're basically telling me that they didn't do this or that. They didn't follow the safeties and and yes, they did re- receive more energy. And because you did receive more energy and you're not following the safeties, well, hello, hello, getting a twisted Kundalini awakening experience based upon your own karmic uh, challenges rather than anything that the teacher has done. By even listening to this broadcast, you're opening yourself to your Kundalini, not my Kundalini. You're opening yourself to your kundalini by virtue, by the virtue of my kundalini, by virtue of that which is coming through this voice into your ears as you lie there or sit there or stand there awake or asleep. It's coming in. It's coming in and it's going straight into your spinal cord, straight into your chakras. Okay. If you have any questions about any of the topics that we're talking about, please feel free to call United States area code three four seven nine three four zero zero two six three four seven nine three four zero zero two six at this time I'd like to bring Santara on and uh, we're going to ask her some questions hello yes there she is John's dumping hello? the water hello? on her face. There, there we go. Hello, hello, hello. Um, what have Hi. you been able to do? How were you able to ascertain Chrisom as your teacher? What did that person do to make it to make it real for you? What did that person do to to show your Kundalini and yourself uh, that this person was safe to have as a teacher? Okay. To begin with, I wasn't looking for a teacher. I don't, you know, I, I had no interest in a teacher. When I came to the Kundalini Awakening Systems website and I began to read what you wrote, the Kundalini in me left me know that this was truth because it resonated. And there's no point in me even trying to explain really what that um, was like it just was it my like kundalini resonated and i knew that the teachings that what you had written was the truth for me and um, it it is reflected and um showed me about my own um process and what was happening for me and the more i read the more this happened and then what happened was I was pulled, well, something occurred, a big coincidence, and I was pulled to go and meet you in person. And that is how it, how it began. Um, I began to practice the safeties, and you see, I keep coming back to them, Prism, but the safeties with the teachings, with your personal, um, uh, what shall I call it, I'm going to use the word instruction, but your personal communication with me, all of these things let me know that you were my teacher because, um, and that you were the physical Kundalini voice for me. Um, and you how, know, sometimes how did that feel? Not, how, did that, how did that feel to you? Oh, how do you mean? How try, did try, you feel? Try, 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 try to explain it in a way that 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 massages a person's five body understanding. Come at it from a mental and emotional and tactile perspective, Amelia? Well, from a tactile perspective, um, I would feel it in my body, Chrism. I would feel infusions of bliss, and I would feel infusions of joy, and I would feel affirmation and tingling and all kinds of physical um, responses in my body that were an affirmation of of you being my teacher. From what, other, mental... what, other, what, other, what other physical responses besides the tingling? Be detailed. Oh, my people. God. I'm not... <laughs> but be, be detailed. Having... Like, you know, make, make sure it's a G-rated audience here. <laughs> Stop. 
it's um uh I would have intense heat. Um is this what you mean? Like I would I could have um absolute burning heat rising up through I'm having it now. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Even okay, so let me describe what's going on. In my spine at this moment, from the base of my spine, is this absolutely beautiful radiating heat going up my back. And not only that, it is like um, um, it does a movement in it and it is traveling right up my back and now it is going into my heart chakra and it is bending. Um, and it is going out and it goes beyond my body prism. And I cannot describe... <laughs> I cannot describe that then. It just goes beyond my body. And now it's going up. Can you can you bring John into the room if he would be willing to come? Um, well, I don't know what he's doing. He might be playing poker because he listens to you. <laughs> and the World Cup was on, and I don't know if he's listening to the World Cup. Um, so have, a, have a look. Have a look. Okay. Um, the World Cup was on, and I go, oh, well, one second, and I'll check. So while we're waiting for John to spy, or for Amelia to spy on her husband, John, um, I want to ask John a little bit about what it's like to have a spouse like Amelia, Kundalini active spouse, in his life uh, when he doesn't have that level of activation yet. He has some, but he doesn't have that level yet. And so I was just kind of, kind of for people's understanding, for the broad understanding of what a, a, a Kundalini a uh, couple can have with regards to yeah, balances learning. of power. Yeah. Okay. He is actually um, playing poker, but there is a break coming up. So he says he will come in then. Go, okay. go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. He said to me, what's he going to ask me? And I just said, I have no idea, but, you know, it'll be fine. So he said, okay, he'll come in in a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, so I was just telling you. I mean, I, I can... People. Go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. I was just telling people that, uh, that uh, what it, you know, I'm going to ask John what it's like to have as a spouse somebody who is going through the awakening experience of the Kundalini and, you know, and that how that makes him feel and what his what does he see as his uh, responsibilities and all of that, all of that stuff in, inside of that equation. Okay. Well, also in other ways that um, do, I do we have I'm a, going off. Go ahead. Oh, we I, do I, have a listener. Let me go and say hello to the listener then, and I, I'll okay, come back again. Good. Okay. Okay, and, and so so as you know, your your spouse is supporting you and your children are supporting you and you're not saying anything at work and, you know, your life in the Kundalini is supporting you and things are actually moving forward for you in your life, moving ahead for you in your life. Uh, your mind, if you, have a, if you have a disease or an affliction, your mind is going to move towards, well, how, how on earth and why on earth do I have a disease or an affliction while I'm having the Kundalini? Well, I got to tell you. Sometimes we have these diseases and these afflictions because of the level of karma that we have accrued in other uh, conscious expressions. Karma is a real deal. It's the real thing. And uh, those karmas can coalesce into a person's equation and form a debilitating disease. You can, you know, you can have a disease that is incurable, uh, by medical science, and the kundalini will come along and just like, whoop, there it went. There it went. No more disease. And yet you won't hear so much about that because, you know, spontaneous remissions of that or this or that, or, you know, that's, that's doable within the, medical, uh, within the medical experience, and yet it's not so common. And, and because, you know, the, the doctor isn't taking all the credit for the, for the healing, then, uh, you know, people don't talk about it as much. Uh, but it is a real deal. Your kundalini can spontaneously alleviate any disease, any disease that your karma will allow it to. You see, karma has a lot of power within the kundalini continuum. 
Karma has a lot of power. It is the blueprint of your life on this world. Yes, 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 you have many choices, many decisions to make, many patterns of probability to explore. Okay. But the, the main reason you're here is to, is to work through the karma that you have made in other expressions of consciousness in the physical. That's why you're here. And if you're here, if you were born with a debilitating disease, it does not mean that you cannot have kundalini. It does not, you know, say you've got cerebral palsy or you've got some other, you know, debilitating disease that doesn't let you do the same things that other people do. doesn't matter with the kundalini. Kundalini doesn't care. The kundalini cares about what is behind your eyes and behind your heart. Everything else is external to the kundalini. And it's not that concerned about externals. It's far more interested about how you're doing on an internal level, which is where it is residing in your body, internal to you. Okay. So the kundalini will come. And as you, as you give yourself to that kundalini and you have all the, you know, the different experiences of detoxification and pain or whatnot, uh, if, you, if you're coming into this with a severe disability or disease, I want you to understand I'm not interested in giving you false hope. I am not interested in giving you false hope. None of the hope that I'm giving here is false. And none of it is out of ha- your reach. Hi, Clinton. Yes. I'm interrupting you because the, the break is on and John has come into the room. And he has a very short he has a very short while to speak with you before the table is open May again. I speak so to him? here he is. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, John. This is on your ear there now. Yeah. Hello, Chris. Hello, John. You you are the man behind the scenes, aren't you? I guess you could call me that. <laughs> I wanna thank you, John, for 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 the you know, for all the time and the effort you put into to allowing this show to come on. So thank you very much. You're welcome. I would like to thank you for the excellent support that you're giving your wife in her Kundalini Awakening experience. And so, boy, I mean, if I could, if I could make every spouse into the John O'Connor model, I would. You, you are very, very helpful. Tell me what it's like to live with a kundalini awakened spouse like your wife? Um, it's very difficult to put it into words, because um, I, I suppose it's a most wonderful experience. Well, you had to say that. <laughs> of course I did. Of course I did. But it is a wonderful experience because um, there's a a vibrancy and a beauty about me and her kundalini that is always present. And I suppose it has enhanced our relationship in many, many ways. And I suppose like our whole life has just been a wonderful journey since kundalini, I won't say entered our lives, but since, since we knew that it was kundalini. Hmm. How do you feel about uh, Kundalini in your life, John? Well, I tell you, I think it's really great. I suppose just a simple example. Now, the other day, I was doing, I was doing some help. I was helping in the kitchen, as some men tend to do, and I nearly, uh, accidentally, nearly cut the top off my finger, and uh, Ouch. you know, it was a really, really bad cut, and I Ouch. got a, oh. I got. A, I got a really, I got a, you know, I got, as well as being deeply caught, I was deeply traumatized and shocked by it. And they tried yeah. to give me some healing, and I wasn't in a position even to to take it. And I really felt that I should go to the, the local hospital or to my doctor and um, get some stitches in it. But when I came back to the room, I mean, it said, just sit here for a moment or sit here for a while and let me give you some healing. So I sat down and um, I allowed Amelia to come to me 
and she like my hand was actually it was wrapped in 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 a big a big huge tissue and it was pumping it was pouring blood and uh she took it she took my finger in her hand and I just felt I don't know what the word it's hard to put a word on what I felt but I know that I went into a sort of a semi daze a sort of a semi sleep sort of semi daze semi whatever <laughs> and but I could feel the energy flowing from Amelia. What did it feel like? It felt like a I don't know if any of your if your if your listeners out there have have a farming background, but when I we have a, electric fences that give out a very mild shock, a kind of a pulse. It had that kind of quality to it. It was kind of like an electric charge coming into my hand. It's just one way of describing it. Now, without you know, to put words on what was it's almost indescribable. Really, it was like a a current coming, a current flowing into my hand, and. As it was, uh, as as it was happening, I could almost feel my um, my wound closing, my my whatever wound knitting together and closing. And after some time, Amelia opened her hand, or she had her hand around my hand. I I kind of didn't, be, I was kind of became unaware of the time really. And after a while. She she opened her hand, which was wrapped around my finger, and the bleeding had stopped. The wound had closed. Now, it wasn't gone away or anything like that, but it had stopped bleeding, and the wound itself had closed. And I was in a place of sort of just total relaxation, if that's the word, total um, total peace. Serenity. Thank you, Serenity. So I just yeah. lay there, when I say lay there now, I was sitting upon the sofa and I mean, had gotten a cushion and, and put my hand on it, but I just sat there with my hand resting upon the cushion for what seemed like hours. The pain was gone. The fear now, the fear was gone. The fear that I might lose my, you know, the fear, the fear, the deep-seated fear I had that I needed to get somewhere and get medical attention and get stitches, that was that left me as well. Wow, what a beautiful experience, yeah. John. And I felt it deep in my heart as well. You know, I just have felt that serenity and peacefulness and, you know, so, and in my yeah. chest. And wow, that's, that's wonderful, John. And now, now... Ever in your in your career as a as a police officer or a you know a, a, a senior accounting manager uh, in, in in your daily walks of life have you ever experienced uh, a, a kind of application that is similar to what she gave you with your cut hand? No. Okay. Even as a, as a policeman. Did, did did she ever like uh, give you a massage, or were you ever injured on the job that that kind of pushed you to to get uh, you know comfort from from Amelia? Not no, not really. No, I would not injured on the job. I would have come like I would have I would have been uh, involved in some traumatic in, some sort of traumatic incidents without having without a physical in, injury, and I would have found Amelia. Coming home to Amelia and her presence would have been very soothing for me. May that now, always having, be so, my friend. <laughs> I, I hope so. And may I just say that, having listened to your story there earlier on, I am the chairman of the board of directors of my credit union, my police credit union. And if I were to go into my credit union and speak of Kundalini, I'm sure I would be removed <laughs> as chairman very quickly. <laughs> Good point, John. Good point. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. My, Hopefully I'm yeah. also... <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. I also play a little bit of poker. I play a little online, and I'm involved in a game there at the moment, so I must go back to it. 
Oh, because, well, uh, I want you to... I, pro- I hope you I, I, No, no, you're okay. What I find is having, having, having listened to media and what she has to say and having, having done some of, of... and having observed her leaving her life by the safeties, I also try and practice the safeties myself particularly when I'm driving, I can be a very impatient driver <coughs> and intolerant. And having watched a media's example, I have, I have definitely gotten more patient and way more, to- more tolerant. And I try and practice the safeties myself. I also occasionally, I will occasionally, I do the Tibetans and things like that as well. So... Well, John, you are an excellent example. I just want to thank you for coming on and, and interrupting your game that way. I hope you win the hand that you're going your very next hand. I hope you win it. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, suppose and I, just want, I want to note, thank you. You're very welcome. On a final note there, just I suppose for some of your listeners out there, maybe I suppose being in an, in, being in an intimate relationship with um, a lady who is Kundalini activated and is, is is very strong in her Kundalini. Uh, I think I re- I I receive great benefits in in our intimate relationship as well, and infusions of Kundalini energy at various times. And I think Tantra has also a big part to play in our in our in our in in our lives and in in, in our relationship as well. Uh, uh, I, I, I I am a very I'm I'm a very very lucky man. I'm a very lucky man in that I have a really wonderful wife, and I would say that I'm a very lucky man that um, Kundalini has entered our lives and has made, as I as I said earlier, has made our lives such a wonderful, wonderful uh, place to live in. Well, thank you, thank you, John, and and thank you for being that excellent spouse for Amelia as well, and thank you again for putting this, helping Amelia to put this show together. You're very welcome, and it's a pleasure always, Chris, in speaking to you as well. And might I just say to your your readers, or your listeners there, that I have met you on many several several or many occasions, and it's always a pleasure to meet you, and and to also feel the Kundalini radiating from you also. Thank you, John. Thank you, and, it, and, and, and I feel the same way about you. It's always for for those of you who who have never met John. John is a Big man, he's like six. What are you, six four? Six about six three, three six three and a half. <laughs> Close can understand. Six, four, yeah. You would have been a formidable police officer, I think. <laughs> well, some people would say that, all right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you very much. You, you're welcome. Goodbye for now. Good luck. Oh, you can hear them. They're all like arguing in the background. What do you? What did you say? Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Oh, that really, here. like, <laughs> that was lovely. I was in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> was the sound okay? Did you hear it all right? Actually, yes. It sounds very good on John's computer because I had to give him the earphones so I couldn't hear. And so I was into the other room. It actually does. It sounds good. But the interesting thing is, I'd say you're almost, um, you're a good bit behind. So there's two or three sentences happen here, I think, before he hears them inside. There's a time delay. So that's interesting. <laughs> anyway. Well, um, I, I, yeah, it, it is. It is interesting. And, and here's the other thing. Though. I, because we have met John, we have met a very positive, blessed, a supportive spouse for a kundalini awakening person. I want to also go into the other end of the equation. Sometimes some of you are going to be saddled with a spouse that is not appropriate for you or for your kundalini, but for whatever reason, your you know whether it's karma or whether it's just laziness, uh, you're not moving on. You're not moving on. Okay, uh, the kundalini can take your marriage apart in 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 a not i mean sometimes it'll be in a bombastic way 
And sometimes it'll be in a very gentle, smooth, you know, hey, honey, I think we're growing in different directions, that type of thing. It can take your marriage apart, but it can also meld it together like never before. For those of you that have a happy marriage, a happy spouse, a happy relationship with your spouse, let your kundalini meld you together as it as it encompasses both you and your spouse and your kids, if you have kids. And your pets. Okay. Realize. Yes, go ahead. One of the things that I think, you know, when you ask a question, it can be very difficult because it has been a long process to say, John speaking to you now, but he's listening outside and he'll know this to be true. I had um, really strange and very, very difficult symptoms way, way before the spinal sweep or the kundalini awakening. It was like kundalini activation. And when, um, two years after that, when I discovered um, the kundalini awakening systems and your teachings, and when John came to read about those, it made a huge difference to him because he had been at a loss for a long, long time before that, as indeed I had been. So we had spent a lot of years um, managing and, you know, um, I suppose in a way, you know, going through layers of stuff in our relationship. And so the Kundalini in, you know, as far as we're concerned anyway, is it, totally solidified because of all the other things that had gone ahead beforehand. You know, we had managed to survive a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah. You, 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 you've managed to survive, but I mean, it's, it's, it's not quite the same as, as having the kundalini there and present in your life. Uh, that's, yeah. uh, I mean, you got support from him at, at a time when you needed it desperately, and even because you didn't know what was going on, and he didn't know what was going on, but you knew that it, it wasn't something that you needed to go into a psych ward for, right? Absolutely, absolutely. John was incredibly amazing during that time, during those times. And, you know, when things would be going on for me, like let's say a physical thing, and I would be shaking, 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 and freezing cold and felt I was dying, and knew that there was nothing wrong with me and couldn't understand what was happening and knew that I wasn't having a panic attack, and yet I was exhibiting all those John was incredibly supportive and incred- he put up with a lot, you know. And well, was an amazing up, man to me. He, he put up with me, so I know that he can put up with a lot. <laughs> I'm, surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't just get tired of me and throw me in the hoose cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it is it is it is a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing to have um, a supportive spouse, and um, it's a blessing it really beyond is. belief. It really, really. And, and I do want to. I want to. I want to. Not, not so much you and John, but I've seen other people be in a marriage that is not so supportive, being in a marriage that is not so uh, uh, supportive of the kundalini and of the new and the strange that comes into the life. Uh, it is, in fact, in, in, a, in a different way, uh, spiraling out of control into a form of, uh, well, hardship for everybody. Okay, The kundalini will tear that relationship apart. It will send, you know, it, it, it doesn't, you know, when I say tear it apart, it's not doing it in a hateful or angry way. It's doing it in a way that allows the two people to, to continue along their life path opening themselves to the possibility of another mate that is maybe more uh, appropriate to their current state of mind than the last relationship or marriage that they were in. Uh, some of my private students are going through that right now. Okay? And when they, when they choose to make that shift, when they choose to really honor the kundalini in them above all else, well, the kundalini will begin to initiate those shifts. And with the help of a teacher, with, you know, if, if, if you have a teacher, and if, you know, the, if the teacher is, is able to see uh, into that area of, of the student's uh, life experience, 
and is supportive of, of what the Kundalini is, is, is doing with regards to the relationship, that marriage is gone. It's gone. Kundalini will end it. Okay. Yes, you'll have to get the lawyer. Yes, you'll have to go through all of the bullshit that a divorce entails. But it will be done. The Kundalini will be done. And, and uh, this is something that you always need to, to, to be very, very, very aware of. And this is also a way to help you fix that failing relationship. If you're, if you're inside of a, of a relationship that has a lot of uh, promise but it's failing... Well, it also gives you a way to, to behaviorally modify how you are to people, to, another, to your spouse, in a way that is conducive to a new chapter, a new positive chapter in the relationship that the two people are having. John, John mentioned Tantra. When you bring Kundalini Tantra into the relationship, you know, a lot of windows and doors are opened with that because you not only are you now... Uh, uh, validating the the whole position behind uh, Tantra, but you're also executing it. You're activating it. You're bringing it into the into the physical expression of this world, of this society, of this energetic matrix that that is on this planet. You're inserting that, and it's noted that you're inserting that. Divinity knows itself. Divinity knows when a couple is inserting uh, divine uh, moral compass into their relationship. Of course, they're red flagged after that. <laughs> let's see. Let's see how they go. Okay. I like that. <laughs> I, I mean, it's true. It's true. I mean, you're really, really red flagged, and for the people that. That, that aren't having such a great experience within a within a, a current relationship or one that's ending, uh, just make sure you do your forgivenesses. Make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure that uh, that you allow your kundalini to mitigate what it is you're going to do and why. Have uh, have a have a closer connection and conversation with your kundalini teacher or the kundalini itself or both. And uh, listen to that advice. Go through with that advice because it will—it should always be uh, within favor of your Kundalini awakening experience. It's, it's, you know, there will always be a support or a uh, uh, a level of grace that is given to you in order to ameliorate, say, a broken heart or or a broken marriage or, or you know any of those more challenging types of of social arrangements will be mitigated by the kundalini and don't be surprised if if you're not feeling sorry you're not being heartbroken you're not any of these things because the kundalini will also mitigate you against that if it doesn't want you to have it Hmm. if it doesn't want you to experience heartbreak well guess what you won't you will not and that includes heartbreak at, 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 at fairly traumatic things like like, uh, you know, a sudden cancer in somebody's family or in your family. Say to a loved one, you know, sudden cancer, stuff like that. You know, this happens every day in this country, and yet it doesn't ease the, the extreme levels of expression that come from, say, a sudden uh, indication of cancer in a person's life. You know, all of a sudden things get really, really, really serious, and people get really, really sad and afraid. Okay, your kundalini can help with that. Your kundalini can can, can really, it can, if it doesn't heal it outright, it'll bring a positive spin onto it. It'll help that person know what is going on. Just like John, when he was laying, when he was sitting on the sofa, and Amelia had her hand around his his cut finger, and he he was wrapped in a level of uh, of serenity so too can your kundalini reach into another person's experience and wrap them in a level of serenity. One of the best ways to do this is to pray to your kundalini to help such and such a person. So we'll just choose Mike Strong. Mike Strong, he's right there on the uh, on the uh, chat group here. So we look at Mike Strong and we go, ah, the collarbone issue. Yes, the broken bone. 
So I would like everybody who is online right now, Fashji, uh, looks like Julie's there, and uh, and Amelia, we'll just do these three right here. Oh, Eileen, you can do it too, and Josephine Smith, you can do it as well. Okay. Pray for Mike Strong's uh, collarbone to be healed stronger than before it was broken. Pray to your kundalini and to Mike's kundalini to let that happen. Let's do this right now. Kundalini that is in me, I ask of you, if it is appropriate, bring great and significant healing to Mike Strong, For the injury of his broken bone, let it be healed stronger than before he damaged it, and let him never damage it again in that way. If it is appropriate to you, my kundalini, let's both see it that way. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So Mike Strong put out a little happy face, so I think that uh, uh, he's got some happiness going on with him, and, and uh, you should all have some happy faces too, and uh, because of what you've just done, Bastian, Julie, and Amelia, Josephine, Eileen, give a prayer for other people. You're welcome, Mike. Mike says, "Thank you, thank you, thank you." Um, you just happen to have a convenient injury. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. <fashion. laughs> okay, we have about 17 minutes left. I want to give out the phone number again, and it's 347 934 0026. And thank you for taking that opportunity to serve. You know, thank you and thank Julie and Eileen and Santara and Josephine Smith. And thank you, Mike Strong, for having the injury. <laughs> I'm sure you paid for that. Let's see. It's funny. My broken bone worked out really well for a coworker of mine. <laughs> I don't know if I... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got more hours, I imagine. More hours. Okay, all right. If you have any other questions about your Kundalini Awakening experience, I'm going to go ahead and start to uh, to uh, wrap this one up. Um, uh, Eileen, I'm going to bring you on. Eileen, my dear. Hello, I'm here. Could you give your announcements again? Yes, there will be a Kundalini Awakening Seminar in Egan, Minnesota, which is in the Twin City area. Uh, Chrism will be there September 27th and 28th uh, for a a two-day seminar, uh, during which time um, he will spend some time with each person and as the group, and there's usually activities and discussions and some lecturing, and just being with other Kundalini people is amazing. Um, and I really miss that, so I'm really looking forward to being there myself. Um, if you We're have any forward. questions, go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If, go you ahead have, if you have any questions or if you would like more information, please contact Rosemary G at usinternet.com. Uh, if you're also a member of, the, of any of the groups, you can get information and her, her number there. Um, we do have a page called Kundalini, what is the Kundalini Seminars with Prism. Um, so you can also look that up, and we're putting information on that page. Um, and I think that's it, Prism, for now. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. And Amelia, do you have any announcements you would like to make? 
Well, that page that Eileen is speaking of is on Facebook. So you, if you're on Facebook, you can look up Kundalini Seminars with Chrism and um, herself and uh, Rosemary up, are updating it. So that's a good one to, to know of. Um, I will again give the, um, the website, if I may, for um, if people would like to make a donation. That is www kundalini-ascension.blogspot.com and um, I suppose just to say again Chris and thank you for the show and thank you for initiating and leading that healing there for Mike and I would just say to everybody you know if you can you know really immerse yourself into the kundalini and stand in front of the mirror as Chris and said every time you go to the mirror you know Give your surrender to the Kundalini and put it into words and say it out loud and then, you know, do things that will actualize your intention and and expand that throughout your day, every day. And the gifts of grace and the freedom and just the way the life becomes is is amazing. And if you've got a Kundalini teacher, um, such as I have, well then, you know, you will be very, very blessed because um, everything that Chrism um, gives for me to do, everything that Chrism speaks is my Kundalini speaking to me and it has always been that way. And it has helped me in ways that I I just kind of, I think it has fast-tracked me um, without, you know, that's not why it was done, but that's the way it has worked out. It is, I would not be um, living the life in Kundalini that I am now without having had a Kundalini, physical Kundalini teacher, that teacher being Chrism. So thank you, Chrism, for everything you do, um, for being my teacher um, and for just everything you do. It's the, the Kundalini, and, I, and uh, you are more than yes. welcome, and, and you and you are, uh, uh, and I say thank you to the Kundalini just as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the one thing that I want to end this uh, this episode on is the disease factor again. If you're coming into Kundalini with cerebral spinal issues or some sort of a uh, of a disease or a or an affliction, Kundalini can take care of you. If it is to be healed, Kundalini can heal it. If it is to be healed, if it's not something that you're supposed to experience, or if the the opportunity for healing has come to you vis-a-vis the Kundalini, take it. Take it. No accident that Kundalini has come to you. There's no accident that you're getting this information right at this time that you're you're you know you know you're looking for ways to to alleviate these this illness from you. I don't care if it's uh, uh, if you were born with it, if it's hereditary. I don't care. Kundalini doesn't care either. It just means that you that that part of your equation was to choose a body that was going to have this affliction. Uh, from a genetic standpoint, doesn't mean that it's incurable just because MDs can't cure it. You know they can't cure most things, even though they take credit for it. The body cures most things. Okay. If you're here with a disease, and the Kundalini comes knocking on your door, I want you to answer that door and invite her in. I don't care what disease you have. I don't care if it's HIV, AIDS. I don't care if it's some some uh, long uh, uh, long name for a disease that nobody in their right mind, except people that have it, would know about. I don't care if it's sickle cell anemia. I don't care if it's cancer. I don't, you know, I don't care if it's hemorrhagic fever. Although that's pretty quick, quick, fast, fast acting. Um, Kundalini can take care of you. It can take care of you. If you let it. If you let it in and let it begin to to control your life. To control your ascension. You as a five 
a, a, you know, a five cents uh, hominid on this world, five senses are not enough information in order to accurately assist a person on an ascension journey that goes beyond the five senses. Okay? You, you know, the ascension thing is a real thing. It's just, you know, it's not something that you see on TV every day. All Kundalini people are leading towards an ascension uh, factor. And it doesn't mean that you float up and away. It just means that you basically you just go out of phase. You take care of all the things that you need to take care of. So I want you, I want you who has the affliction, I want you just the regular person, I want you to go out of your way to take care of all the issues in your life. Take care of all the issues in your life. Actively do so. Be actively forgiving and tolerant and honest and truthful and loving and compassionate. Actively do these things. Buy somebody lunch that you don't know. Treat a stranger to dinner. Doesn't mean you have to eat with them unless you're willing Stop and help somebody who's in a, who is in an, a traffic accident or something like that, or is trying to cross the street, or you know is giving you a hard time. I know some of the people you know with hard times with neighbors and things like that, and that's just a level of tolerance. That's a level of loving tolerance. The more lovingly tolerant you are, the less anything can bother you. Certainly from a from a corporeal nature. If you have a disease or you have a trauma, open yourself to the Kundalini and broaden your understandings of what the Kundalini can do. There are no limitations on what Kundalini can do with regards to healing a person. I don't care if you have a, a, a neurological disease, a collagen-based disease, a psychiatric disorder, a you know bone cancer, whatever. There is nothing can stand in the way of the Kundalini. Sudden remission. Okay? I won't guarantee it for everybody because a lot of people have that disease in order to learn from that disease, learn what it is to 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 you know to have a quality of disease that is that is, you know causing you to experience life in a certain way. Sometimes you need to learn that karma. Sometimes you need to balance that karma. Sometimes just having it for a certain amount of time has already balanced the karma and you're ready to be rid of it. Sometimes having the disease and then, oh, having the kundalini all of a sudden make itself known to you, that is an invitation away from the disease. Healing is real. And Kundalini can do it. Your healing is awaiting you. And awaiting your recognition of the Kundalini within you. But don't don't awaken Kundalini just to get a healing. Don't do that. Awaken the Kundalini because you want to give your life to the Kundalini. You want to be on an ascension equation during the rest of your life. Because once Kundalini's up, it never goes away. It's always there for the rest of your life. Make no mistake. You listen to the tenacity of energy in Santara's words. You listen to the to the remembered uh, uh, serenity of her husband, John, as he describes his experience. You know, this is... You can't make this stuff up. These are real people that you're hearing from. You know, there's no script here for this show. You, you can probably figure that out just by listening to me. Okay, these are real people in real circumstances in describing real incidents and real phenomena. Get your ego out of the disbelief mode. Open yourself to the possibility 
that you can heal and that you can live a helpful, healthy, um, ascension-directed life. And that's what I want you to live. For those of you that are hearing me in the sleep, once again, I'm going to help to eliminate the blockages. I will join hands with Ganapati in this attempt. Ganapati of Amahe. Kavin Kavinu Mupamisha Bastamam, J. Sterajam, Bramina, Bramina Maspeta Anaha, Nasem Vanu, TBC to Saranam. Amelia, any last words? No, Chris, no last words. Thank you again, and goodbye to everybody. Uh, maybe it might be worth mentioning something, actually, from a technical point of view. Elizabeth mentioned in the chat room that she was sort of bumped off a few times, and it happened to me as well once during the show. I was bumped out, and I hadn't lost Skype. And um, I've seen people coming and going, coming and going a lot. So there was a lot of trouble, I think, tonight in the chat room with regard to staying online. So um, sure. just people will probably be listening in the archives again. So hello to all of you who were bumped out. Um, it's just one of those nights. <laughs> well, thank you, Amelia. Okay. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Josephine, thank you, Josephine for listening, for listening for quietly. quietly. And uh, thank you, uh, Fashji and Julie and Mike and Lorne and everybody who is here. And uh, I am now going to officially terminate this broadcast of Kundalini Awakening Systems. Uh, look to see you here, same time, same day next week. And uh, many blessings to you all. Thanks for listening. <laughs>